So one ate the dry, and there's one beneath him. Oh, I really want to land both of these. Hey everyone, I'm on one of my favorite rivers today. It's the Yarra River, and I love this place because it's really kind of special for me in that when I was at uni, I used to finish uni and drive here because it was only about like 40 minutes to this exact spot for me. So I've been fishing it since I was like 18 as soon as I had my driver's license and absolutely love it. So today I'm just going to push up through some of this pocket water which I like. I've got my nymphing rod here and my nymphing set up and I'm going to fish nymphalo dry on this setup today. So a nymph and a dry. Hopefully get some to eat the dry, some to eat the nymph, but we'll see what happens and we'll take it from there. There you go. Alrighty, so gonna fish up through this water. You can see above me here, got my uh, nymph below dry, my dry, if I can grab him here, is this orange tag CDC sedge I really love. And then I've just got a pheasant tail on there. Good thing about the nymph under dry is it can attack the water from some different angles, which is good. So it means if I'm cramped here, I can still flick one up and let the dry take the weight uh, of the nymph but I'm still leading the flies as normal. So I'm just gonna, yeah, poke my way up through here and hopefully get a few fish to eat. I do, I just love fishing this river. They're very patchy on this river, typically I find. The fish like you go bang, 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 and then you don't hit anything for a while. This river, um, one of the hard things about this river and things something people struggle with on the Yarra is that it's a dark river. It looks dirty and it's actually not dirty. It's just quite tannin stained and it's, the rocks are particularly dark. So it fear, it's like, it just makes it really hard to read. But you'll notice like you see the edge when you get up to the stuff, the water's really clear and you can see everything. Get off, it's a bit shallow, that little spot there. And sometimes in this stuff they surprise you and they're out in the middle. Oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> no. It's been a while since I found myself a nice tree. I tied this fly last night, I don't want to lose him. <laughs> I reckon it's okay. That is like one of the advantages of fluoro is that the abrasion resistance, I find I can go in and out of trees and I can jump to this rock. I can go in and out of trees and uh, the tibet's still fine. It doesn't do the coily Thing like mono does. Whoop. We got it. Yeah, so you see in that tree, my tibet here is still beautiful. That's the 7x call and fluoro. But fluorocarbon just doesn't have, doesn't do the curly deal like mono does. If you did that with nylon tibet, it would be very painful. Got to be a bit more careful with these trees. Oh, and I just missed him then. <laughs> Didn't want to strike and go into that tree. No. See if he'll eat again. Oh. Did you see that? I literally flicked it in there. I was like, don't, don't strike the tree. Just don't strike. And then see the fish roll and come off. <laughs> I wonder, he was a small fish. I wonder if I can get him to eat again. or eat another fly pattern. It's really annoying. <laughs> He's in his pocket here. It pains me to do it, but I'm gonna leave him because there should be more fish up above me. You know what, you can, I mean, you can change your fly and get those fish to eat quite often. 
One, that is one of the problems with nymph below dry. Fun way to fish. One of my favorite ways to fish, regardless of which uh, fishing it on a conventional setup or a nymphing setup. But you do have a little bit of a disconnect between the, uh, the nymph and the dry in some water. Now I'm being way too tentative. I'm really looking for one to eat the dry here for you guys because the take will be beautiful and these fish are really nice in this river. That's so frustrating. <laughs> but we got some lovely nice water coming up here. We'll find one up through this stuff. There's one. That is just a classic whoop, Yarra River brown trout. And he was just in that lovely little soft spot as I dropped the line. That was terrible. <laughs> How cool is that? There you go, that's a typical, that probably, that is probably the average size Yarra River brown trout. Lovely little fish. There he goes, on the pheasant tail. Well, it makes me feel a little better for missing that last one. It's never fun missing your first fish because you, there's always that part in, in your head when you're like, is that the only one today? Because I've had it so many times, I'm sure that most people watching this have had it when you get a take early in the day and you're like, oh, it's going to be good, and it's terrible. What I'm going to do, just push myself to this side, and I might work up through this water and kind of not grid my way up, just zigzag a bit. I can't believe I didn't catch one in here. It's amazing. You see, the water is quite clear. Like, all through, oh my gosh. I just caught him right there in front of that rock when I was waiting. I didn't even know he was there. You'll take that. Hello, buddy. That is the unluckiest fish in the river. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. You did not deserve that. Healthy river system, though, when you've got a lot of those little guys in it. So I've come here. And now I'm just going to pretty much work my way across diagonally, hitting all the water I can kind of see and think looks nice. Hopefully I catch one deliberately. There he is. Oh, it's another small one. Poor guy just got sent behind me. <laughs> but, I mean, the good lesson with that fish then was um, getting into the right body position to make the cast and have good contact. I mean, I'm a bit cramped here already. But if you're fishing directly upstream at fish, often you do get kind of cramped. So I'm going to just zigzag my way across. Not really expecting one in the main, main drag, unless there's a soft pocket I can't see. Now we can work our way across. I don't really feel like I've found them, really. You know, I've, I've only fished, what, 40 metres. So, I'm going to save that pocket fish from my forehand side. Surely. expecting one in here. You can probably tell. Oh, I missed him. You saw him up there. He was small though. He was quite a small fish. Take that very, very quickly. He didn't like getting missed either. I don't think he's going to come back. So I got a really nice piece of him. Gosh.
a bit of a mess of pockets above me as you can see so i'm just going to kind of there he oh did you see that he just came up and ate the dry beautifully Gosh, all right, let's try and get him to eat again. He ate that so nicely, and I didn't even feel him. Wow. Come on, eat it again. He ate that in some very broken stuff. That's amazing. And that's why I had the dry on, to try and get a fish like that to eat. A lovely brown. You see, I'm really just seeking out these scenes like this one. I mean, that main current's probably quite nice too, actually. exactly what I was looking for <laughs> so I was trying to feed that one up under the tree here where are my big fish at I haven't seen many of them I've seen two there we go. again now it's a bit of a mess again so I'm just really Looking for these sort of pockets here. Like I said, it doesn't take much to hold them. We lost the other camera because it just overheated a little bit. So I'll get that back going in a second. Get that more onto the scene. That's better. Better spot. Oh no! Hit him way too hard. Way, way too hard. I felt that like pull. That was pretty bad. Channel fish, maybe. Oh my, there was one in there. Did not expect him. Where are you going, buddy? Is that a rainbow? No, it's brown. Very ready brown. What were you doing up there? You're crazy. That fish was sitting in that little bit of a channel there. That's amazing, he's so dark. And I fished through all of this beautiful water for one fish and a couple of small ones and then a little nice guy's there. That's crazy. It's a good lesson, just don't neglect this stuff because that is amazing that he was sitting right in here. We got the other camera up and rolling. Oh, there it is. This is I hope I catch one here because this will really save save my little session. So often you catch you don't catch them in pockets and you catch them in soft stuff. So it'll be interesting to see if the change of water type helps. I mean there was one in here. So let's see if we can get one more. Oh and there he was. As soon as that hit the water. Oh. That is the problem with the dry. Sometimes it just you make the cast and you <laughs> you make the cast. That's caught around my rod tip as well. 
you make the cast and you instinctively instinctively wait for the uh, for the fly to take the weight sorry the dry to take the weight of the nymph and it doesn't help when the fish eat on the drop like that one did all right into my main spot there should 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 well there often is a fish on this far side of this current and this deep bedrock's not amazing it doesn't hold the numbers of fish other water types do but i know in this river there's one i've got a double there's one on the dry and one on the nymph that is amazing oh my gosh so they one ate the dry and there's one beneath him Oh, I really want to land both of these. See, there's the small ones on the bottom, which is good. That is amazing. Come here, buddy. Yes! There we go. <laughs> How about that for a double? <laughs> How... How does that happen? Look at that. Well, this small guy fell out when I was taking a photo of the double, but there's the other, the little brown. He's beautiful. And that's crazy. For that to happen, it was a lot of luck. Oh, I'll talk to this camera. It was a lot of luck because I must have, the fish simultaneously ate the nymph and the dry at the same time. So it was a complete fluke. I don't know. But maybe that makes up for that water there being so tough. So, I'm gonna flick a couple more. I need to dry my dry. Dry my dry fly here. Ordinarily, look, if I was just out to catch a lot of fish, I would be double nymphing that water there. So I can show the fish two options deep. Um, but, you know, it's, it's Labor Day weekend and doing a bit of nymph on the dry because I love fishing this way. And sometimes you get lucky. Alright. Here we go. We'll flick up. At least you know I'm not making it up when I say I, this river can be very good. Because, you know, that water, I mean, the bedrock seems today to have been a bit better. Maybe the water's the water is a little low, and there's been a lot of people around swimming and stuff. There are people swimming in the pool above me, so maybe that's just I don't know, done something. We're gonna have to jump across to a slightly different angle, I think. Oh, that's a good one. He was right in the tail out. Come here, buddy. Don't, don't do that. He's wrapped up around his uh, chin there, coming in weirdly. Nice fish. Lovely little fish. Just on like a waltz worm variation there. Lovely little fish. <laughs> Alright. I'm back over with Greta. Swing around here. I reckon I'm going to wrap everything up there, guys. Um, I might trim out a little bit of the middle because it may have got a bit boring, but uh, it was tough and I was lucky to hit a few here late in the end so I think I said it halfway through the video when you're doing it tough and you're getting a little bit frustrated just tell yourself that you know you, you, you'll keep you'll get one you'll keep going and you know if you do that enough it will turn out okay and you might get a double header there and another one so yeah that's the video thanks for tuning in thanks for supporting the channel everyone it's super helpful all the nice messages and emails are really uh, really encouraging to know that like 
it's helpful um, and you guys are learning something. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next video.